Hey, what's up? Justin here with 65 Drums and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing my full review of the brand new Simmons SD1200. We're gonna talk about the good, the bad, and whether or not this drum set is worth buying. Today's video is sponsored by DistroKid. This is an awesome service that allows you to post that song you've been working on or your entire album that you've been working on to all the music web services at the exact same time. The way it works is you upload your song once to them, you put an album cover on it, you fill out all the different forms, and they instantly send it to all the different music websites out there online so your fans can hear your song no matter what app that they use. They instantly send it to Apple, Spotify, Pandora, YouTube Music, Tidal, Amazon Music, and 150 other services. They really do all the work on the back end so you can spend more time actually making the music, which is what you actually wanna do. Go check them out in the link in the description below where you'll get a discount on a yearly membership. Okay, so jumping into the review, let's talk about what comes in the box if you buy one of these. Overall setup time on the Simmons SD1200 was very, very low because it's just pretty self-explanatory. This is not a difficult drum set to set up. What helps is that the drum rack is already pre-assembled. That eats up a lot of time in some drum sets that I've had to set up in the past. The only mod that I really did was that I took tom mount number two and slid it over to the right side. That way I could have a one up, two down configuration. On the back of the drum module, there's two extra inputs. So you can have tom number four and then an extra crash cymbal. You get a 12 inch snare, two eight inch toms, and then a 10 inch floor tom. So as you can probably tell from the marketing images and stuff, this does have mesh heads. They come with two ply mesh heads on the toms and the snare. Overall, the playing surface is pretty nice. It's your standard two ply mesh head it will compete pretty well against you know, most other drum sets in this category. Just know that these drums are not tensioned correctly when they come out of the box. Simmons and Alesis never have their drums tensioned correctly, and that's why at a store they feel really wimpy. Overall, you'll be fine as long as you tension up all the mesh heads. If you take apart the snare drum pad, this is what it looks like on the inside. It's a very simple design, but it's very effective. You got the piezo right there in the center. You got a trigger cone. Overall, it just works. Okay, so let's talk about the kick drum for a second. This guy is kind of interesting in good and bad ways. It's a six inch design. It's got Velcro on the front of it, so it's rock solid. It does not move around, and it looks like it has a regular mesh head on it like all the other drums, but that is kind of deceiving. The first uh, clue is that it doesn't use tension rods. These are actually screws. You'll need a screwdriver in order to take this thing apart. When you look at the inside, you're gonna see that it has two pieces of foam with a piece of metal in between, and then the mesh is literally glued onto the top piece of foam. So it gives it kind of like a soft feel to it. It's not as bouncy as the mesh heads. And that's one problem with a lot of you know mesh kick drums. If they don't have a giant piece of foam behind it, they end up feeling way too springy. So overall, the feel is decent. Now, the downside of this kick drum is that you can't really adjust the tension of it. You can't make it softer or more bouncy. You can't really adjust it at all because it's just a piece of foam. But also, I've noticed that mine sort of like spins a little bit as I'm playing. And even though you can like, you know, crank down the tension of the screws, it's not really gripping the, the foam block. It just sort of is floating there and it is what it is. Also, the foam sometimes won't spring all the way back. So if I were you, I would put a kick drum patch on there just to hide this mark if it does happen on yours. It doesn't affect the performance of the kick drum, but it just, you know, is a visual thing that you may find annoying. Overall, the kick drum performs better than the Elise's Crimson kick drum, but not quite as good as the Roland KD-10 kick drum. You can technically use it with a double kick drum pedal, but I've found that it performs better with a single kick drum pedal. If you do use it with double kick, you gotta make sure that you perfectly center it, because if it's at all off center, the kick drum does not pick up both beaters. These appear to be newly designed cymbals with a different kind of rubber on them. Overall, it feels a little bit nicer than what they were working with before. The cymbals are 12 and 12 for the hi-hat and the crash cymbal. They're pretty much interchangeable. They're the exact same thing. 
and then you get a three zone 14 inch ride cymbal. And of course, everything there has choke strips so you can mute the sound if you don't want the cymbal to ring out. There's a significant hot spot on the ride cymbal right under the bell. You can play on this hot spot and it will spike. It'll be really, really loud. And the moment you move off like an inch and a half from that hot spot right underneath the bell, you'll suddenly be playing really, really quiet. So just be aware of that. I don't know the exact wiring configuration of this symbol, but it only has one input on the back of it. So if you do wanna upgrade the ride symbol, you gotta use other ride symbols that only have one input on the back as well. You can't use the ones like on the Elisa's strike line or the roll on line that have two inputs. It's a completely different wiring setup. Also be aware that you can't, you know, crash too hard on the edge with your stick and leave the stick there because you'll accidentally activate the choke strip the choke strip is very, very sensitive because it's on the front of the symbol instead of underneath the lip of it. It doesn't matter how hard you play on them, just make sure that you release your stick right away. Overall, I like the way the symbols look. You've got those fake lathing lines that go around them and also the fake hand hammered dents like you would see on Yamaha symbols. So I, I like the overall design language. But for me, anything is a big upgrade over the Simmons SD2000 symbols. Really didn't like those because they didn't really sway very much and also they felt like I was beating on a concrete block. Okay, so moving on to the drum module, this thing is pretty unique. It does some things right and some things wrong. What I like about it is the fact that, number one, it has faders. This is very rare at this price range. In fact, this is the cheapest drum module that has faders on it, at least in the North American market. You can select three different modes for the faders, which I think is kind of getting out of hand, but overall, I really appreciate the fact that they put faders on this thing. That's pretty unique at this price range. Another unique thing about this drum module is the fact that it has a color screen on it. This is the only drum module around this price range that comes with a color screen. Nice to see that here. This drum module also has a Simmons SD1200 app that they're working on. Unfortunately, it's gonna be iOS only, so I do not have an iOS device. I can't really even test the app. I know some people care about apps and some people don't. For me, I almost never use apps, even when I have access to them, because I don't know, I don't feel like pulling out my phone and adjusting things other than the music that I'm playing to but some people really, really do pay attention to the apps and care about that sort of thing. Also, this thing does MIDI over Bluetooth. You can integrate this with GarageBand and trigger the drum set in GarageBand wirelessly, which I think is pretty freaking awesome. They also let you import your own samples as well, which is always nice. It doesn't have a huge file limit, and of course they're just gonna be one-shot samples. You can't import all of Easy Drummer or all of Addictive Drums into this you know, drum module, but it's a nice feature to have regardless. As far as the overall internal sounds go, um, everyone's gonna have a different opinion about this. I do have a couple of drum sets inside of the module that I do enjoy listening to and playing, but most of the sounds aren't very good, in my opinion. I hate to say that because I know they actually went and recorded all kinds of different drums for this drum set. They actually did that for the SD2000 library and they remastered a bunch of the snare drums and stuff like that for this drum set specifically. But they did it at such a low you know, bit rate or something about the quality isn't very good, something about the way they mix the sounds. A lot of these kits really aren't gonna be usable for recording or anything like that. This drum set is better for using with external VST programs. So if you buy this drum set, it'd probably be better to hook this up to Easy Drummer, Addictive Drums, Get Good Drums, Steven Slate Drums or Superior Drummer 3. That way you can get really nice sounds like this.
Okay, so moving ahead to the pros and cons list, here's a list of things that I specifically liked and didn't like about the drum set. Starting off with the stuff that I really liked. I like the ability to assign different sounds per zone. They don't chain the rim zone and the drum head zone together. So if you buy a bunch of cable splitters, you can make this drum set a lot bigger with the same drum module. You don't need to go buy a secondary drum module to really expand this kit. The quality of the mesh heads is pretty good and I do prefer the white look versus like the black mesh heads that some manufacturers use. They're using a three zone ride symbol, which isn't always guaranteed at this price range. The T17KV has a two zone ride symbol. I like the color screen on the drum module. The kick drum does not move at all. It might wobble a little bit, but it does not move around. I like the fact that you get faders on the drums. You get the metal drum rack. The Simmons references that are hidden all over the drum set are also nice as well. I also like the fact that you can remote control the drum set through an app that they've made. I like the fact that they have MIDI over Bluetooth. And I also like the sample import feature. And then finally, I like the fact that you can mount the iPad or your phone directly to the drum module because they have a mount for it. The only problem with the mount though is that it's kind of locked in. And I'm not really a fan of the exact angle of the mount. I wish it could like tilt back a little bit so it was a little bit easier to see what's you know actually on your phone or your iPad. Okay, so moving ahead to the cons list, here's some of the stuff I wasn't as big of a fan of. Now the first is that major hotspot right under the bell zone. I wish it wasn't as prevalent right there. The second thing is that the CPU for this drum module seems to be a bit underpowered for what they're asking it to do, especially in the edit screen. As you're, you know, testing out, you know, changing the pitch of a drum, if you try to play the entire drum set in the edit screen, it sounds like there's a major, you know, you know, 30 millisecond delay to everything. You have to go back to the main kit screen and then you can play the whole drum set in context. So that's kind of annoying. Also, when they're cycling between different kits, you'll see that the new picture of kit number two will slowly scroll down and it kind of just, it looks like the CPU isn't powerful enough for what they're asking it to do. There's a bit of a lag to this stuff. It's kind of strange where they put the aux volume knob. I wish it wasn't on the back of the drum module because it's hard to see exactly where you've turned it. You don't know if you've cranked the aux all the way or if it's only half up or if it's all the way down. This next thing was kind of interesting. One day while I was playing this drum set, the screws that were holding the kick drum together they kind of just fell out of the drum. Not a huge deal, but I feel like you need to go make sure everything is tightened down if you buy this drum set. Go tighten up the mesh heads, go tighten up all the individual screws and all the different tension rods and everything to make sure everything's locked down because apparently not everything is completely put together out of the box. And then finally, this last one is a pretty big deal to me. With the current update that I'm running with when I'm making this video, you can't turn up individual sounds inside of the drum module, at least in no way that I could personally see myself. So for example, there's one crash symbol that I really like, but it's kind of quiet. So I had to turn everything else down in the faders so I could turn the crash symbol up. You know, in this video, I've been struggling with how to say Simmons possessive. Do I say Simmonses or do I just say Simmons? I don't know, I'm just gonna roll with Simmons. I feel like this is Simmons best drum set they've made so far. This is better than the Simmons SD2000 in my mind because they tried a lot of new things that didn't all work. They took the feedback they got from that drum set and implemented it in this new lower price design. But at the $1,000 price range, there's a lot of tough competition. This drum set is sandwiched between four other you know, offerings out there. Actually, more like six if you really think about it. This is $100 cheaper than the TD17KV. It's $100 cheaper than the Elise's Crimson Model 2. There's also a Yamaha drum set that I'm trying to remember. I think it's the the 582 or something like that for $1,200. But this is also a little more expensive than the TD17 KL. It's a little bit more expensive than the Elise's Crimson Model 1. The Crimson is gonna be the one that a lot of people are gonna be comparing this drum set to. They got identical size snare, identical sized high toms, identical sized cymbals. Try to go to a music store like Guitar Center, Sam Ash, or any big music store near you and try to play all the options and see what you like most. Let me know what you think about this drum set down in the comments below and I'll see you all in a few.